All right, so uh, you can see quite a big change. Um, I've painted all the red and uh, non-metal gold off cam here on that, that part. I think it turned out quite nice. You can see I've tried to always blend in the lighter uh, color to one direction. So we have the lightest parts always here on, on that side. Also to have um, like the highlight going down here in the middle meeting down there. You can see that also quite good on the, on the back side. On the back side, because it's wider and more open, I just also um, blended it a bit darker here to create something like a horizon reflection. Um, the dark color here is just facing the very light light of the horizon. Um, that's quite actually quite a nice method to separate large areas like that. You've used exactly the same techniques that you've used yeah. for the earlier non-metallic metal. There's, there's nothing different. It, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's just tedious work because you have to all do all these little small highlights and it right, just takes right. a bit of time. Um, I also uh, painted this arm here off cam, um, but again, just the very same techniques. Um, little loaded brush uh, combined with a bit of glazing. And, and it's not a glove, right? It's yeah, his hand. It's, it's his hand. Right. And actually it's funny because it's one of the few parts where we actually see some skin color. <laughs> right. <laughs> we painted everything underneath and uh, that is the bit that we see. Um, so he got like a, the red armor on the outside mm -hmm. and here the inside is the flesh color. Um, I also painted the little blades here in uh, non-metal silver using uh, dark sea blue and black and white. And this here in some off gray with a little bit of uh, tank brown to give it a bit more warm. You wouldn't, you like, I noticed that you went with like the gray, you, maybe you wouldn't, you didn't choose like a bright color, would that have been too distracting to have something like that coming off the top? Yeah, especially because, you know, we have that little spotlight here with the red and the, the highlights here, right. then the bright face, and then having something of a strong color there would be too distracting. Okay, and, and actually something we mentioned off cam, it comes back to, to why you use the black, the black undercoat, because the... To do those little ornaments, if you'd have done with the white, you'd then have to sit there and, and dark line and get all every, the shadows yeah, yeah, there. Every single bit. Yeah, especially if you just imagine you do it either in black and white or just too much white or plain white. Mm -hmm. uh, and you would base coat it in white and you have those all those little areas that you actually can really hardly reach with the brush. Right. And they're white. They will always pop out and uh, you'll see them and like, ah, look at there, they're so white. But with black, it's just easy because it fades in naturally with the shadows. Perfect. Um, for this chapter, we will um, paint the, the skull here, uh, the one on top there. Um, it's a bit like alien-like, monster-like beast skull. I guess there is in the fluff background, there it's exactly explained what kind of creature that was. Uh, we're going for like a natural bone color, but with uh, black teeth. I think that will be like a very nice uh, combination also here on top to have that contrasting with the, with the skull. Um, I will mix some uh, Ruxac Tan from P3 with a bit of uh, model color black. And uh, some ivory. Again from model color, right, the yeah. ivory? And we start to base coat. Actually, the whole thing, because you here in that skull we don't have uh, like eye sockets or yeah eye sockets. Uh, we just have the nose that is a bit deeper, so we're not going to push the color all the way into the nose, but uh, the rest of the skull will be pretty light. Something for me as, as an amateur painter, I, I really struggle with lighter colors. And we were talking in the office the other day about yellow. And you were saying it's really important to, to start off with your base coat that isn't like the yellow that you're looking for. Yeah. You want the one that's a touch darker and it, it ends up looking more natural that way. I think it's something to highlight, especially for the bone. Like you've, you've done that mix there that's, that's that, that slightly bit darker to start off with and then to get into the color that, that, that you want. Yeah, I think it's it's nicer because doing highlights um, 
especially on, on small structured elements like that, it's quite easy. Right. Um, but if you want to blend it over a large surface, it's, it's better to start a bit brighter than you actually uh, want your color to end up to, because then you can just easily uh, glaze in the shadows and that looks more softer. Uh -huh. um, but for areas like that, it's just perfect because with the loader brush, uh, we can just go for the uh, for the strongest highlight in one go, and then uh, just glaze our way back down again. Okay, let me just take off the arm. Oh, my heart just went there, man! I thought wouldn't that be horrible if it just like stuck and uh, <laughs> you know, snapped? I mean, that that could be quite a cool a cool extra chapter actually of how to how to fix it when it when it snaps <laughs> off. We've just done this amazing video. Um, I've added a bit more black here to get it a little bit darker down to the side, to the side here. Yeah, it's 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 a really um, interesting concept. The the way that you're doing that, it's almost like the the wet on wet. So, like before, I would be thinking, right, I've put the one color on. I need to wait for that to dry. And then I can put the darker color on, even if I was putting the shade in the areas, mm -hmm. you know, so I would think, okay, it has to dry first, but actually it, it looks more natural. Even if you're not, you're not like totally blending that line, just having the two wet paints together, you can get quite a good uh, first transition. Yeah. Yeah, it's also good to kind of see where you're going very fast and then just uh, see if you like that and, or if you need, for example, the lighter color to go down here a bit further um, so it's good to see that very early in the process mm. and of course because you're using thinned paints you don't have to worry too much about clogging up the detail yeah but you can see the paint was uh, thick enough to to actually cover with almost one go right um, I, I was sitting here but I, I didn't want to be like oh my god Ben you're so amazing you've done it in one coat <laughs> But, because I uh, think you've had enough of that over this time period <laughs> that I've been. No, but it's also because some some colors just tend to to cover a bit better. Uh, like the 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 P three is quite a nice beige tone to have that in the mix. So just a second layer of the same color. It looks a bit lighter uh, once we apply it, but uh, when it dries, it will look darker again. And, and yeah, we, we talked about this as well earlier in the earlier video that you have like the the softer first coat and then you're, you're, you're kind of strengthening it um, by putting that, that extra layer on top, would you say? Yeah, I think it's it's a bit like smoothing things out because you get like the, the coverage of the paint is more even. Mm -hmm. And um, just also to get like an equal layer of paint uh, on the on the model to have like the the surface being more or less the same, it, I think it's quite good to just go a bit thinner with the th second layer, right? Just to, to even things out. Especially when you work on light colors, it's important that the first base coat is really even and uh, and dry once you, uh, before you continue. Therefore, okay, some uh, black just to outline the teeth here. Okay, and from now on the main blending work will be done with the loaded brush. So base color on the back of the brush and some ivory on the tip. And we will first start with the um, most raised part, the lower side here of the nose. And continue to the upper. To highlight the small textures um, here, just uh, depth a bit on the, the surface. Okay, I think a bit of white to get stronger contrast. I think that's something worth talking about actually, where, where you're saying just on the very, very small textures, just, just to kind of dab the paint. I think if you if you then, once you've done that, you take the model and you put it right up close to your face and you just look at that tiny surface and see the imperfections, you might think, 
okay, that looks a bit weird. But yeah. then when you have it from like even even a foot away, everything kind of comes together. Um, like we were talking in the office about there are certain painters who who really when you do get that 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 close to even display figures, they they can look slightly spotty. But that that's how they're designed to be when you're standing, you know, half a meter away and looking at this thing. Everything just kind of blends together with all the the subtle tones and nuances of the different colors, the different shades. Yeah. Plus, when you look at at uh, stuff in real life, um, you know, light is not always a soft transition. You have the the reflection is just actually dots of lights, and if you have a rough texture or a woolen jacket or something like that, mm. the way the light is scattered on the surface is not. Uh, soft transition it's full of tiny right. little dots and especially something like a skull like this which would be you know yeah quite I mean imagine open and porous yeah, yeah I can imagine that a that a, a, a chaos armor smith wouldn't be um, wouldn't be very <laughs> <dangerous> <laughs> to, to when he was when he was skinning yeah. the animal and, and yeah. fixing it to the to the armor Oh, which I thought actually it could it could be the dog. It could be the breed like the, the <laughs> yeah. dog is. Maybe that's that's what the, the creature is. The first dog, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> Instead of having him mounted and stuffed on his wall, he's he's had it onto the armor. <laughs> okay, so you see, uh even if you do like a big splash of white there, just easily have to uh, load a brush and blend it on the surface. Don't be afraid if you, if things at first sight look a bit rough, um, because you have plenty of time to actually work with that. <coughs> It's amazing the difference it makes just a couple of strokes. I mean, we we've said this before. Um, when when you were doing the axe, like when you started to glaze the red on the the little bones coming out the side, it, it's it's amazing the difference it makes just that that subtle. That, that subtle stroke that you're doing. And I think it's always quite nice to see actually when you're working on one part, like uh, like the skull here. Right. Um, how amazing and textured this side looks and the, the other one is just still plain. Right, right. So you have that very strong contrast, um, a very small area. forgot that you're using the loaded brush and I was about to say oh so we've just missed that you've added some white into your base color because um, I'm still trapped in that in that layering thing you know without without yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the blending and I was just about to say oh no Ben you've missed that we need to mention um, that, that you've added white to the mix but it's 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 amazing to see you do that And you've um, you, you've got plans to do in the future uh, a video just dedicated to the loaded brush, right? Yeah, um, the idea popped up because uh, we get really a lot of mails of people asking, okay, uh, very nice, very amazing things that you can do with the loaded brush, but I still didn't understand it like mm -hmm. 100%. And we I really try also to to answer all the all the messages. Mm. Um, But yeah, it's, it's actually hard to explain just while doing the video because we're we're just also trying to tell you how, for example, how to paint the skull. Uh -huh. So it's just focusing on the loaded brush in, in a video like that is kind of tricky. So right. we want to uh, try and uh, show you the whole process actually of how you lift your brush and mm -hmm. um, because you need to reduce the pressure and talk about that a little bit more on depth um, on a smaller technical video. And I think that will be really interesting for a lot of people to see. Also, actually, it's it's a bit like for the base DVD, it was so cool to have time to actually just explain bases for several hours. And I think it's a little bit the same when we will do the first technical video. It's just like, it's very good to talk about things a little bit more in detail. Mm. And I think it's important to say for, for people at home uh, who, are, who are like me and, and, and find that, that quite a, a, little, a little bit intimidating to, to first try, that it's not that you're saying that you have to do the loaded brush technique. Yeah, sure. It's just that this is a way that you can achieve the same look as if you've been layering it and glazing it, but doing it just so much quicker. 
Yeah. Um, even Matt made that made that comment on the Horus video. Um, that that he something that when he would paint it, it would take like fifteen minutes to do something that just takes you like thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, for example, that little blending here on the top. You know, if you do that with glazes, it would just take you ages. So, um, and I think you know the only thing that you can really show people in a in a in a believable way is how you personally work and how you create your miniatures. Right. So. For me, you know, just switching to other techniques just to, to show right, cause, something. Because this is, this is your style. It was something yeah. we were saying actually earlier on about how, how it, it's great to, uh, to emulate other painters because that, that's a great way to learn. Um, but, but it's also important to try and make sure that, that your own style comes out into it. Um, and I think it's pretty safe to say that, that this is very much Ben Comet's style. <laughs> Hope that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do slay of swords, dude. It can't be that. It can't be bad. Uh, lucky times. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's just pure black there, right? Yeah. And it's it's just to neaten up. The, the the edge the join where the yeah. line is okay. yeah I want to do that before I do the highlights on the on the teeth just to have it um, clean nice neat okay so um, for the teeth we will also do a very tiny loaded brush um because I think it's quite nice if we do the highlights like that they're still softened out a bit but yet they're dramatic. So you can see black in the back of the brush, right. white to the tip. And for the smaller ones, we'll just simply place little little lines of light because as fantastic as a painter you are um, to, to wet blend on, on a surface as tiny as that that's that's gonna be pretty tricky right yeah and actually there's no need to really blend a tiny teeth like that because um, your eyes can actually hardly hardly make the it, difference. It comes anyway. back to what we were saying. Everything just kind of all comes together, and, and you see it as the whole picture, not as like the individual tooth. Yeah. Um. Unless there was someone out there who decided to get a high res photo of yours and just zoom in right on that <laughs> tooth and just say, "Oh wow, yeah, Ben Cohen's he's not all that. Look at this tooth. Yeah, look at that. Oh God." <laughs> <laughs> um. To, to make the um, the black teeth blend a bit um, better together with the with the skull um, I want to push the contrast a little um, I will do that with darker lines in here in the shadow area here to push just the contrast a bit so going for the dark mix that I've initially used here to the sides okay but uh, due to the highlight that we've already applied it will look a bit darker right okay because I, I was just about to say like my my um, gut instinct would be to take the darker mix from the side and actually add more black into it in order to make it stand out but because you've got those those bright highlights it it, it already does yeah. stand out yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely and as we we're using that here on the also on the very top of the skull we need to be careful to not have too much contrast there in the in the beginning mm -hmm. darker on the here towards the, the, the sides here mm -hmm. so, so so you have actually added a tiny tip of, of black uh, yes now yep. to, to increase okay. the, this part here and that's just because because you're falling right into those darker shadows yeah right also we were talking earlier about that off cam that um, 
actually it's good to really train your um your fingers every single day and just try to maybe paint half an hour or an hour practice a bit um, new techniques test some colors but mm. just do that every day so it goes into your muscle memory right because otherwise you will be always your brain will always be occupied with thinking of okay how do i do that how do i do this and you don't actually have time to think about important things on mm. like color choice and atmosphere because you also think, okay how do i bend this how do i do that um so once your hands know what they're doing it's a lot easier Something you mentioned um, earlier, we were talking about um, complex mixtures of paint. Um, it, it, when, and paint when you paint like uh, uh, just like a small area of a figure, if if you've got say like a, like quite a complex mixture of paint, you may tend to paint more of an area first before yeah. then going back yeah. and highlighting it because you you. To remix that, you could get it pretty close, but but yeah, but not one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but if if you're doing like say like say like a, a a more simple recipe, where you're actually just using the straight colors, you could paint more of a larger area with it because you know you can go back to the pot, and it's the same paint. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can actually achieve with just three colors. You can achieve quite a yeah. Especially as, as you have just proved here with these, this, <laughs> this amazing figure. But yeah, so I think, uh, you know, keeping it simple really helps you to, to get like also your own f workflow. Because if you can decide to pause whether you finish or not, it's quite a, quite a relieving thing actually. Because you can just start with an arm for a half an hour and say, okay, now I go to work, you know, when I come back. It's right. still easy to get the same colors back. It's not that you sit there and like, I have to finish it now before <laughs> I leave. So. so, yes, I'm a maniac. I also paint before I go here. <laughs> and again, ben, Ben's not saying that this is the absolute way that you have to do it because I, uh, I do know a couple of painters who actually make like recipe cards. They, they have like a, a book mm -hmm. and then they'll often paint little squares as, as an example of the color. Yeah, you know, and, think, and, and that's just the way that they work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, really, it comes in really handy to have like a recipe book if you do uh, commissions to maintain like a professional right. level and have them all in the same color working right. very well together. So, if you someone was to say, "I've seen this particular model of yours. Uh, I, I really like the way you did this. This purple. Would you? Would you make?" This purple on this yeah, miniature yeah, form, yeah. please, so you know exactly how you did it, and and you've got the notes of, of how much you used and a yeah. and a shade reference. Yeah, again, I have like a very good uh, the ability for me to recreate tones. I, I find that quite easy, so I don't have. <laughs> so, you know, no, I, I, I it just comes naturally to me. You know, <laughs> no, fine. no, but I think even before before I could really. Call what I do, what I am doing figure painting. Right. Even then, it was that was the easiest part for me. Mm -hmm. So I never had the problem of finding the right colors because that was just that is just a bit natural for me. But getting things smooth and that that was really hard for me. So I really paid painted years and years and years and tried to get things better. So uh, I think I already paint for <laughs> a lifetime or two. So I think really. Um, if it's not that easy for you, you know, it's very good to have a, have a book. Also, if you have, for example, people that you paint a unit for and they contact contact you like in two years later and say, okay, here is the rest of my army, please paint them in the same style. Right. It's very good to come back to, to the color recipes, actually. Okay, here I just... Um, dotted in the highlight on the top of the, the tooth here mm -hmm. and just took some gray to pull it down. Um, I will also mix a bit of gray to, to get some 
uh, like lines in the in the in the teeth to create with like a like a horn texture. All right, so um, I've created uh, the gray on the palette to give those teeth here a little bit of horn texture by having thin lines of gray. It's quite a quite a um, a lot of artists do that, right? So for the horns, you you, you see like the horns with these lines going down the side. Yeah, it's like a very classical way of mm. <laughs> classical. There we go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's a much better word. I mean, it, it's like uh, English is your second language, you know, and you still have a, a, a much more eloquent way of saying things. <laughs> yeah, but my English is actually quite, quite terrible. I was <laughs> so embarrassed to talk English on camp. Um, so I hope you guys uh, <laughs> take take my uh, excuse for that. My part. No, I think it's good. I think it brings out the best in you because I've actually heard um, Ben speak German. He's quite aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but only with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I hope you don't you, you don't mind. You know, it's not my my first language, so speaking speaking English all day is sometimes. Especially when you paint it like the whole day, it's kind of tiring. Um, so I hope you don't mind any mistakes I do. Um, speaking of mistakes, um, the, uh, the highlights here turned out um, a little bit too, uh, let's say, streaky to to the lower side, especially. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, I want to give it a bit more uh, vibrance. So I will glaze over it, um, also here over the tips of the, the teeth actually, uh, with some brown ink to just give it a bit of vibrance in there. It's interesting you would say to do it, with, why, why would you say to do it with brown ink and say not to use like like a, a middle tone of the colors that you used? Um, you can see it's a little bit like with the small spikes. Just right. black and white and red over it, and it gives a very interesting tone. Okay. It's the same with the with the tank brown. If I would just go here, because I actually for those here, I've just uh, used black and white. Mm -hmm. So I could wash them with a black or a blue black, but uh, I think we would not really see a big difference then. So this and this this comes back to the the keeping the atmosphere the same all over the figure. Yeah, and I've also used here for those here. The small teeth here. Right. Also use some brown ink in the, in the recesses. I think it's worth mentioning as as well, like like when Ben's doing that, he's still very controlled. It's not like you're you're loading up the brush with a load of it and just kind of throwing it all over and just letting <laughs> it sit there, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 very controlled. Um, one thing to mention about the brown ink this year is from Andrea Color. Very nice tone, a um, bit like the old Games Workshop brown ink, uh, dries off quite glossy, so it's between satin and, and gloss finish. But see that, the nice little effect that it makes on the, on the top, because you still see the highlight shining through, mm -hmm. and it's nice because it's just tinting the highlight a bit, a bit brown. On the, um, the satin is, is Really nice for horns as well. Horns and teeth. Okay. Um, I already quite like that dramatic effect of the of the strong highlights on top. Um, to increase that, I will use a bit of uh, the strong tone wash from Ami Painter mm -hmm. to um, just. Darken the, the shadow areas in there, tone them down a bit. Also here to mark the sides. The nice thing about the the strong tone is, it looks more intense while it's wet, but it dries off actually quite desaturated. Right. So it's good to take it, that color to just darken things down because it will not really have a strong impact on the color. And there are, I, I read sometimes on, on forums and online, some people can be slightly, um, slightly turned off by using things like washes, you know, saying it's, you know, you, you should make it's your not own like wash a, or that yeah, sort of it's stuff. It's not like but, a professional. Right. Yeah, and, like, yeah, but, yeah. but they're there. Why not use them? Yeah. Plus, uh, I think 
you can use really any color or product that helps you to achieve what you want. Right. The problem is if you don't know how to control the color and you see, you can, you know, if you do that and then in right. the end see easily like, oh, look, there he used the strong thorn wash. Right. Then again, we have that situation where it really is not, not a benefit for your right. picture. And, and again, it, it comes back to, to saying how much you load your, load your brush and, and, and how you control it. My, my, my first experience of washes was because I'd hear, I mean, even the name wash, you know, so you, you want to throw as much liquid at it as possible. And I, I remember the first time I used the wash, I, I think it was on a, oh, on, on, on a figure and, and I just then, it was dribbling i mean literally there was there was like from from, from the head just like dribbling all the way down the figure to the feet and, and i'm thinking but but these are supposed to be revolutionary you know it's saying that it dries and gives you great shading but i've just got blotchy <laughs> patches everywhere. and that's exactly why yeah yeah you have to still control where the color is is running i think that's also like one of the advantages of the working section by section is that you just tend to be more careful because if you wash something, you just apply the wash still over one area, like for example, shoulder pad, you just do that single element. So, you know, it's not flooded everything. Right. Yeah. Right, so I'm just softening out the highlights here. I also added highlights here on the part where the, um, the round top ornament is like inserted into the skull, just to I think it's here it's attached to the skull in the back of the, the model so I just highlighted those to give them also that bone color mm -hmm. and I would just soft out the top part of it and I think then we're already good to go and repeat actually the the very same on the on the other skull right. but yeah I think we should do that off cam because it's really we don't want to bore you guys I think it's was good as well that you did that one because it might might uh the kind of angle and you know the back of it it looks like the one that could be slightly trickier to to paint in comparison to the one on the shoulder pad yeah actually it's also the the more important one of the two because it's, it's just it's the main on, focal point yeah, yeah and it's right. just on top of the the, the skull mm -hmm. and his head so it's just in the in the very center mm. can you just hear a bit lighter down here to make that line stand out a bit more. Otherwise it vanishes too much and it kind of melts together here with the shadows. Right. With the medium tone, just very, very uh, thin, glazing over that here to bring things a little together again and to get rid of some of that very strong contrast here on the top line. Right, so... Um, I think as uh, after I've uh, completed that skull off cam, um, we will focus on the big part here of the cape that is still missing. That will be in a, in a very dark blue with uh, like uh, <laughs> two of my favorite colors finally combined. It's the uh, dark sea blue and uh, tank brown. And so I think we can achieve quite a nice little effect and still not introduce any new colors. So we have the, the blue that we've used previously on the on the metal parts uh, and we've used some of the tank brown here on the on the cloak as well awesome all right all right so you can see um, I finished the other skull here on the uh, side of the shoulder pad because we have that scene line here in the middle um, I kept it quite dark to to actually ex exaggerate that uh, even a bit and added like these little painted on cracks to the side. Right. So, so, you, so you made that work like work and, and kind of accentuated it rather yeah. than try and hide it by yeah. covering it with paint. And um, for the horns, I've used the same color that I've used here for the shadows here on the in the darker areas. Um, but I highlighted that with white, so it turned out more gray in the end. So, what, what color would you say that is, Ben? Uh, <laughs> I think it's uh, greyish. Greyish, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, so you've taken two colours and you've kind of blended the two together to create a new one, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Interesting, interesting. I, I've not seen that concept before. <laughs> so, yeah. 
blonde girlfriends and uh, <laughs> greyish suits. So the uh, the bleen of the ocean. It must be the bluey green. Um, it's interesting there actually, where where you you just you've added that little extra bit of white because you're constantly looking at the figure and just making sure that that all the spots of, of light match and yeah. you've got the right you know the the right source of light the direction yeah also the like the the light really needs to travel from that side here down and be caught more on that side right so uh yeah you have to just check the figure constantly and see if you need some adjustment uh, adjustments okay so yeah but i think now i'm i'm happy so far um, in the next chapter, we will um, tackle this large piece of cloth here, and uh, that will be in blue. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the skull, ch uh, <laughs> the skull chapter, and yeah, we will have plenty of skulls here to to work on uh, off cam as well. So uh, we might come back to do just a single human skull uh, later on when we do the base part for the academy. But uh, yeah, that's it for for the skulls on the miniature itself. Thank you.